We begin our story about an hour southeast of Salt Lake City. We're near Midway, Utah. This is Wasatch County, along the banks of the Provo River. Sheriff Todd Bonner knows the river well, but not all of his memories are good ones. I was a patrol officer in 1995. Uh, call come in, uh, you don't ever expect to have a call such as that. You kind of go blank for a few minutes. It was a December morning in 1995 when then-deputy Todd Bonner was called to the scene of a murder beside the Provo River. The body of 17-year-old Crystal Baslanovich had been found badly beaten, and there were very few clues. It was a real-life whodunit. And soon after that, the case went cold. There are very few murders in Wasatch County each year, sometimes none. Probably one of the hardest cases I've ever had to, to deal with in my life. Back in 1995, Crystal's mother told a Utah newspaper her daughter left Spokane, Washington, and started working as a prostitute at age 15. But Bonner was determined to get her justice. There hasn't been a day go by that uh, I haven't thought about her at a crime scene, and I knew that the suspect uh, was out there possibly hurting someone else. Bonner did his best to keep the case alive, but he couldn't catch any breaks. We didn't have the manpower. We didn't have the technology to move forward with the DNA. For more than 15 years, the case was cold. But finally, thanks to new technology, Sheriff Bonner caught his break. I heard about touch DNA. One of my detectives wanted to know if we could submit some of the evidence that we had and see what we could come up with. The sheriff assigned the case to Lieutenant Brian Gardner. So many leads have been exhausted. We really didn't have anything to go on. With the advent of touch DNA, I thought it's possible. Hopefully we could find something off the evidence that we could test and get a DNA match. Crystal was killed with a rock like this one. Back then, deputies collected what they believed was the murder weapon, but at the time, they didn't have the technology to recover DNA for analysis. But now, a breakthrough. I was really surprised. So how do you get DNA from a rock? Jared Bradley has the answer. He's the president of a company called MVAC Systems. His company makes the vacuum that extracted DNA from that rock. This system uh, enables the, the investigators to get into any kind of rough surface like uh, a rock or concrete where the DNA is not going to be uh, on the surface and readily available. So before they were using swabs, and if you swab a rock and the DNA is inside because it has little holes in it, you're not going to get it, but you're using a vacuum technique. Correct. It actually sprays lucianus and vacuums at the same time. It's literally creating a little mini hurricane down there for that DNA material. Just loosening the material so it can be vacuumed back up. Exactly. You can get a t-shirt here. If I was the suspect and I grabbed somebody just like this, I transferred my DNA. Krista Baslanovich case, they got some DNA samples from a rock. This is a typical Utah River rock. If this were to be um, used as a murder weapon, the suspect is going to leave uh, touch DNA, skin cells, and, and sweat, and that kind of thing on the surface of, of this rock. If you can't see it with the naked eye, those are the, the perfect samples for the MVAC system. From here, the sample gets sent to a lab for analysis. 